So welcome to my Old West collection video part one. Um, there's a lot of Old West stuff that I have, but this is uh, the first run I want to show you. And yes, I'm drinking Arbuckle's coffee. And you're like, what's Arbuckle's? Well, Arbuckle's coffee was one of the first ground coffees available. And um, it was sent out west so people could have ground coffee and not have to worry about finding and grinding and roasting and grinding beans themselves. So um, that was one of the innovations from the Old West. And you can still buy it. So uh, it's like arbucklescoffee.com or whatever. My wife bought me some. It's really good. Each pound of Arbuckles coffee comes with a peppermint stick in it to keep it fresh tasting. And it's, it's really good. So um, I learned about Arbuckles coffee from this movie right here, um, Broken Trail, with Robert Duvall and Thomas Hayden Church, because he's in a store and he says, I want a couple cases of Arbuckles, and I was like, what's an Arbuckle? Some kind of fruit or something, but it turned out it was coffee. So, by the way, this is a really good movie. You should really watch it. So, I want to show you some of my Old West stuff. Here's a deck of uh, Old Western style playing cards. And it's put up by Jack Daniels. And here's a little, little information card. So, uh, it says Civil War era playing cards. So I'm sure in the Old West they still would have had a few decks like this. But I really like the the sort of um, woodcut design of them a lot, especially the Joker. Um, the different suits are just very cool. The ace. So you see, I mean, these are just really cool cards. They feel good in my hand. These are, these are awfully old. Um, this deck of cards is probably 25 years old. And it still holds up very good. Because my mom and dad bought this for me a long time ago when I was a kid. Because I liked Old West stuff. Okay. Um, this is just goofy, but you know in Old West they had um, snake oil salesmen. Well, here's um, Dr. Jake Dawson's liniment tonic snake oil. It's a bottle that uh, you could fill with whatever you want. It's that uh, you could fill it up with your, your drink of choice, but you could pretend like you're drinking, you know, medicine show, medicine. So it's just a funny little prop, but it makes a good uh, shelf decoration for your bookshelf. It's got a nice cork in it. Um, many people ask about this book. Uh, it was featured in the end of the movie Tombstone. And it's my friend Doc Holliday. And, um... As you can see, it's copyright 1994, so that should be a big clue. That, uh... He did not... Wider did not in fact write a book like this. However, because of so many people who go to Tombstone asking for this book, the good people of Tombstone wrote one. And you can easily procure your copy in Tombstone. Don't try to buy it online because it's ridiculously expensive for all of 17 pages. Um, it's a very straightforward narrative of the relationship between Doc Holliday and Wyatt Earp that's gleaned from history. There's nothing in this that's going to be any inside information that you can't get already. It's just a souvenir. But nonetheless, many people want one of these. And uh, you can, this cost me, oh gosh, it was like five bucks. So don't get ripped off. There never really was a book like this written by Wyatt Earp. But nonetheless... It is a very cool conversation piece. But like my ninth gate book, this is in fact a, a, uh, a, what a, what's the word? Is there a word for a fake book that exists only in the world of movies? But 
nonetheless people are always looking for one it might be inspired by something but it's generally a thick book so this is one of my favorite things this is a Sam Elliott action figure he's a little dusty this is a Sam Elliott action figure and it looks like from any Sam Elliott movie um, but this action figure was actually released for um, a, a young adult movie that came out a few years ago about like people who had little animal familiars who followed them around everywhere and Sam Elliott was in it he had like a little rabbit familiar it had Daniel Craig it, it was not a box office hit the only reason I bought this figure because this is a western Sam Elliott figure that I can use for my bookshelf uh, the likeness is really good Hold on. come on camera this is not my day for focusing but it, it's it's just uh, very cool to go with my my western stuff this is the only that I know of Sam Elliott western action figure you can get so uh, if you want to recreate a scene from Tombstone or Conagher or one of his other, many other great Sam Elliott movies you know there is a figure you can get but it was made for that movie that and I can't remember even the name of it um, uh, it had Nicole Kidman just google it Daniel Craig Nicole Kidman Sam Elliott it was a movie it was it was not a big hit but you could get this very cool uh, not particularly well articulated but nonetheless good looking Sam Elliott action figure with a pistol that fits in a holster I mean it looks like it was made for a western movie speaking of cool old west toys I also want to show you my good Bad and the ugly Lego minifigures. And oh, how I love these. As you can see, Blondie has his Tuco wanted poster, his Serape that looks very much like the movie, and his pistol, and his clothing is movie accurate. His face is pretty good too. Here is Angel Eyes holding some of the go one of the gold coins that he so sought after. And once again, the face is good. It looks like Lee Van Cleef. And finally, Tuco. And no hat because he didn't wear a hat very much in the movie. But the clothing is just like the movie. He's got his gun. They're ready for the the standoff in the end. Yeah, this is one of my favorite movies. The Good, Bad, the Ugly. Um, the Grittiest Western Ever Made. Strikes Gold on Blu-ray. Well, there are about a million different versions of this movie you can get. And don't pay a lot because you can get a fine version like this at Dollar General for like five bucks or something or less or dollar sometimes. Uh, there's... Um, one of these has uh, like an introduction by Quentin Tarantino. This particular version has all the deleted scenes restored with voiceovers by the actors again. So, I mean, it, it, you can tell when you're in a deleted scene because suddenly Clint or, or Eli Wallach sound very old when they talk. So, but nonetheless, it's really good. Um, audio, this one has audio commentary by a cultural historian, an acclaimed film historian, so you have two commentary tracks. You have uh, a documentary, Leon's West, the Leon style on Sergio Le Leon feature at The Man Who Lost the Civil War, Civil War documentary, Reconstructing the Good, the Bad, the Ugly feature at Deleted Scenes. Um, so the, the, about the soundtrack, and the original theatrical trailer and for some reason it's rated R I have no idea why um, here is the soundtrack on good old classic CD that I still have from back in the day uh, that being probably the late 90s early 2000s but it's really you know as we have 
moved to the digital age, I just sort of keep it in my Old West shelf as a part of my Old West collection now. Pretty soon this will be Old West. Uh, but I do like the artwork. Um, CD liner notes were always hard to get out. But, uh, the liner notes were really cool. <laughs> I love that. I mean, there you have it. There's your liner notes. That is... That is some good graphic design right there. That's some clever graphic design. Um, see, it's honestly worth owning it just for that. The next thing I want to show you, I bought this in Tombstone. Um, this is a Tombstone City Dusty Clear. Sorry, because it's been sitting. It's a Tombstone City license. Cop as a copy of a um, of a license for a licensed uh, enter entertainer, uh, lady of the night, and, um, must be displayed in conspicuous place above bed, uh, and it's signed by Wyatt Earp, Deputy Marshal, and, um, now my, the historian in me is telling me this is a funny souvenir for tourists, because there are many red flags on this that tell me this is not, uh, um, real or even a real copy of a real thing between the dates the fact that who signed it house of ill fame on allen street southwest class class 69 okay you see it's it's dumb it's a dumb souvenir so if you buy the if you go to tombstone if you buy one of these it's not real just want you to know that but there are clues and red flags particularly that that they ridiculously Crusade name um, <laughs> must be displayed in conspicuous. I don't think these were real, but it's a pretty souvenir anyway. Here's a copy of Wild West magazine, and I bought I bought it for this article about Billy the Kid, and um, it's called Shooting Billy the Kid, and it's about that famous photograph. It, by the way, there's a movie called The. Uh, but Gorbadal's Billy the Kid, that's got a pretty good uh, reenactment of uh, the shooting of Billy the Kid. So, um, I always look at these ads for these things that you can get in these magazines. And, um, spectacular treasure from Mount St. Helens. Now, I'm sure you're not going to get an emerald that big. Um, but these magazines are still fun to read. Because they always have, you know, good articles. Or... Let's go back to cell phones that are just basic. The jitterbug. Um, honestly... I should not laugh because I'm going to need one of these for too long. My, I'm already wearing reading glasses. Yes, it's going to happen. Get ready for it. Smallpox in the blankets. Of course, that's a terrible reality. Gunfight of the Sierra Madre. Grizzly. Larry Sheehan's career as leader of the train robbing band also ended. I used to love to photograph dead bodies in the Old West. Ah, this is the article that I bought it for. It was, um, about the the photograph, and yeah, it is true. If you look very carefully on the photograph of Billy the Kid, you can see one of the photographer's assistant's hands holding the uh, um, this area to uh, to fill in light. I guess it's a flash increaser or something. And you can see 
this is a good analysis of the photograph and you can see the fingers right here it's funny it took them almost a century to notice that they also noticed that for years and years and years they assumed Billy the Kid was left-handed well take a sip of coffee mm. as a matter of fact he wasn't left-handed because this photograph had been flipped which was uh, very not a very common uh, thing in cheap photographs by um, People, you know, if you look at my old catalog videos, you'll see that you could buy photographic equipment and go out and set yourself up as a photographer. Well, many of these photographers um, uh, printed their negatives backwards. So, because they just weren't experiencing it. In this case, it was printed backwards. And the clues are, number one, the belt buckle is buckled backwards. And the Winchester ejection port is on the wrong side. I'm sorry, not the ejection port. That would be on the top. The loading port is on the wrong side. So, those clued in people that this photograph was in fact backwards and he was in fact right-handed. So, the the traditional way we've always seen this photograph is the left-handed gun way. But, that was not the case. And recently, if you've been keeping up with the news, they've found at least two other uh, photographs that have been uh, validated as Billy the Kid. One added from his capture at Sinking Springs alongside Dave Rudabaugh and Pat Garrett, and another one where he's playing croquet, which is very cool. Winchester repeaters, I was just telling you about how the Winchester, you can identify... Uh, a, a gun this is the loading port of the Winchester right here so we would know if the photograph was backwards or not now a computer designed for you not your grandchildren who do they think I am I'm buying this magazine I'm not a hundred years old I'm still a kid I mean they see they assume that just because I bought this magazine I'm going to be looking for every large print thing in the world okay um, I guess I, I guess my interests are. Hmm. I don't know. Confessions of an acid reflux victim. Well, I do have acid reflux, so maybe I do need. To be... Oh Lord. <sighs> I guess they pegged it. I I am not that old. I like reading old West magazines, but apparently this is a hundred percent marketed for people who are much older than me. Um. This is, I, I like this kind of stuff. Okay. Um, why am I showing you this DeLorean? Because it's the Back to the Future car, and I I actually have added this to my Old West collection, because, as you know, in Back to the Future Part 3, Marty goes back to the Old West, and, um, and that movie is so old now that we might as well just include it in our Western library. But this is a very uh, detailed Hot Wheels, even down to the license plate on the back. Um, it's got the ins interior. You can see the flux capacitor and all of the wiring. is just a really good Hot Wheels. And um, every now and then Hot Wheels will surprise you when they're not made. Actually, I've noticed recently they have dropped a lot of the dumb cars. And they're, they're trying to compete because Matchbox is creating some of these superbly well-designed cars. And Hot Wheels is still churning out garbage, so they're trying to get their, their act together. Let's hope they do. And finally, on this video, um, I want to show you this very interesting book that I purchased in New Mexico when I uh, used to live there. And this is The Kid, Billy the Kid. Um, this is from the Artists and Writers Saga, but I'm not sure... Um, if there's any other books in the saga uh, but it's by Bill Ricosi artist author in 1985 and when I first saw this book it was in plastic and I was um, I didn't wasn't able to open it in the bookstore so I was curious it said with Ricosi watercolor sketch 1495 so I paid the extra two dollars because there's an actual signed uh, artwork inside of the book too and I have very high hopes for this book so here first is the this is an original watercolor by Bill Lacosi. And this is a, from Messiah. 
Uh, this, and I believe I, you bought this in Las Cruces, but you see it's close by, and uh, so you could pull this out and frame it, but I'm not going to. But this is an original watercolor that Bill did. Now, when we get to the book, um, it's, it's got a little board for Bravo Press in El Paso that, that made it. And then they just kind of put their business card there. Um, the introduction by Alex um, Apostolides is um, just very brief. And then there's some credits and acknowledgments. And it starts out promising. But it loses its, its narrative flow, and it really just sort of becomes um, a very interesting collection uh, of drawings, copies of yellowback books, which is really cool, and his Xerox copies of primary sources in no order or narrative. But nonetheless, it's, a, in my opinion, it's a work of genius. I, I just love this. It's just, every page is so scattershot, full of quotes, or some some text that, that Bill wrote. But then it just delves off into it, all kinds of different directions. Um, um his almost all the, the drawings he did and then we have copies of like his birth certificate his birth record which is this is really cool i mean this shows his birth record from new york so i mean you get some impressive research in here um it's just and you got Newspaper articles. Um, there is, there is a lot. Of, I mean, I think if this was organized better, you know. It, but nonetheless, some of the pages are repeated. It's kind of a bad print job. <laughs> There's a little bit of that going on. Um, it's just such an interesting book, and I don't regret buying it at all um i like i just like love flipping through it to see where it's going it, it just doesn't really have any coherency it's just uh but it if you have patience and flip through it there is a lot of payoff in this so if you happen to go to new mexico or into that souvenir shop and you find one of these my goodness, buy one. I mean, it's just a w absolutely unique just absolutely unique. <laughs> There's no other I, I don't know what else to say about it. Davina Max, I always thought it was kind of a creepy picture. It's just got so much. Yeah, like cool ads from old papers that you cut out, put in here. I mean, he put, he put. If you can wrap your brain around his, there is, like I said, there's some brilliance to how he created this. I think what he was thinking, the author, is he like he was trying to give you an immersive thing. He wanted you to can to feel like you were really in the past with everything you were looking at. He was trying to show you thing the concurrent things from the time period. He was trying to create something 
again. So there is something to it. He's talking about the foot fixture even way back then. In case you're wondering, I am, I've researched really the kid a lot, so if you want to know what I think about some of the, um, the controversies, number one, was Brushy Bill Roberts really the kid? No. Absolutely not. Uh, was Billy the kid, in fact, killed by Pat Garrett in Fort Sumner? Yes, he was. Was he killed the way Pat Garrett said? Most likely, but there is a possibility that it was a little bit more cold-blooded. Um, did Billy the Kid kill 21 men? No. Um, was Billy the Kid really the leader of the regulators? No. I think Billy the Kid was embraced by... Hey, look, it's my painting. Billy the Kid... I've actually eaten in this restaurant, La Posta. It's just an interesting little thing. This is about the author, Bill Wachowski. He worked with Salvador Dali. Um, he's, you know, he, he's an artist. He's done a lot of stuff. This was his, this was one of his projects. More of an art project than a serious historical book. But if you look at it from that point of view, I think you'd really enjoy it. So, okay. Well, I guess that's enough for tonight. And I, if you like this video, I'll do more. I've got a lot of Old West stuff. Um, I like to show it and talk about it. So, I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time. Bye.